what is going on everybody so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys basically how to configure your server see so after you get it set up you figured out how to get people to join uh, I'm gonna show you how to basically edit the server.properties file which right now I'm creating fresh uh, so this is gonna be exactly how it would be out of the box if you were gonna start the server up yourself for the first time um, so I'm gonna let the server initialize here and then we're gonna go take a look at what's inside of here just gonna let it finish making spawn. All right, so now that it's done, we're gonna stop our server. We want to shut down. We're editing the configuration file. We can always reload it if the server is up, but right now we're just gonna shut it down. We're gonna press continue, and we're gonna edit this and. Basically, some of you guys aren't going to have the dot properties file extension right here associated with Notepad or Notepad++ or whatever text editor you're using. So the way to do this is to right click on the file, click open with, and then what you want to do is if Notepad doesn't show up here, you can click more apps and you can scroll through until you find Notepad or WordPad or anything that basically is a text editor. I'm going to use Notepad. So this is what the default 1.14 uh, server.properties file looks like. So I'm going to go through everything here and I'm going to tell you guys what you should be worried about and uh, what, what you really shouldn't be worried about. So I'm just going to up the font here so we can read what we're looking at. Um, okay, so spawn protection. What spawn protection does is if you're not an opt player on the server which means you don't have operator status you don't have access to the commands and you can't you can't kick people ban people you're just a normal player there's going to be an area around spawn if this number is anything over zero that is basically the number of blocks away from spawn that someone uh, is not allowed to break so basically it prevents the spawn blocks from being griefed so uh, I usually turn it on or off, but sometimes it can mess up, like if you're trying to build near spawn, um, and the person you're trying to build with isn't an operator, they're not going to be able to break or place anything there. So, that's just something to think about. Um, max tick time, I'm pretty sure that this right here will say that if you have a tick uh, that takes this long, then the server's obviously crashed or it's hanging, so it's going to stop it. Uh, query port, I'm not sure what this does, I wouldn't worry about it. Generator settings, um, what this is going to do is I think you can put in custom settings here and that's going to basically change world generation. So you could change like the level, the sea level, you could change the biomes, or basically how the world generates. I think you can put settings after the equal sign here and those will apply when it's generating a new portion of the world or a new map. Force game mode. What force game mode does is, uh, let's say I'm in creative mode, and the default game mode for the server, which we haven't got to yet, which is right here. I'll say it's survival. But let's say that I'm in uh, creative mode and I leave the server and I rejoin. Is it going to force me back into the the game mode of the server, which is survival? So in this instance, it would not. If you wanted that to happen. Every time you join the server, you'd be set back to survival. No matter what you were when you left, you'd, you'd put that to true. Allow nether true. That's going to enable or disable uh, nether portal functionality. Enforce whitelist. Uh, what this is going to do is turn your whitelist on or off. Now, game mode survival. This is where you can set the game mode of the server, like I was saying before. When someone joins, they're going to be put into survival mode. Uh... If you set this to creative or adventure, it'll do the same thing. Broadcast console to ops, true. So if, let's say the console is running commands. Uh, the operators on the server will all be notified in the bottom of their screen down here what commands are being run or what's happening. You can turn that on or off with this right here. Uh, enable query, I wouldn't worry about that. Player idle timeout. This right here is going to basically AFK kick people after a certain amount of time. I believe that number is in seconds. So if, if I set this to, uh, you know, 600 seconds, that'd be 10 minutes. So difficulty easy. This is just the difficulty, normal Minecraft difficulty. 
uh, broadcast Archon to Ops. It's, a, it's the same thing as the other thing, but with Archon commands, I wouldn't worry about that. Spawn Monsters, this is going to enable or disable spawning of hostile mobs. Um, op Permission Level. I wouldn't worry about this too much right now, leave this at default, but what this will do is you can switch this between, I think it's 1 and 4, and uh, basically it, it'll cap off like what commands operators can do. So like, if I set this down at 2, I'm pretty sure operators wouldn't be able to op, uh, basically make other players operators. You know what I mean? Like You can kind of level it. But there's no way to make someone on the server a level 2 operator and then someone else a level 4. It's just you set everybody's level the same thing. In order to do that, you're talking about plugins and a whole other deal. Um, PvP, obviously, you know, player versus player. That'll enable PvP combat on the server, turn on or off, server-wide. Um, Snooper enabled, don't worry about that. Level type default. Well, you can set it super flat here. Um, Basically, whatever different options there are when you select to create your world, you can change that or type that in here, and that will apply that, that setting. Uh, hardcore false. You can set hardcore to true, and then if you die on the server, it will kick you and then ban you. So, essentially, you can't join back unless a, a moderator or an operator of the server happens to remove you from the ban list. Enable command blocks does exactly what it says. It enables and disables command block functionality on the server. Network compression threshold, don't worry about that. Max players 20, this is gonna set the player cap for your server. Max world size, this right here is gonna set uh, how far out from spawn that you can go before the world border. Uh, resource pack shot one, don't worry about that. Function permission level, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the Archon port. Server port, this one's actually pretty important. This right here is the port that your server is going to be running on. So let's say you change this to instead of 6.5, it was like 7.0. This would be the port that your server's on. This is the port that needs to be port forwarded. So this setting is kind of important if, if you change it. It's always going to be 2.5.5.6.5 unless you change it. Server IP address, I always leave this blank. Spawn NPCs, true. So what this is gonna do, obviously, is spawn or uh, basically allow or not allow villagers and other NPCs to spawn. Allow flight. This is going to allow or disable flight on your server. If you haven't been kicked from Minecraft because uh, flying is not enabled on the server, that's what this setting is right here. You can enable it or disable it. Level name world. This is a very important setting right here. Right here is how you. Uh, determine the name of the world file so let me show you here see how this is called world if I was to change this to world 2 and save this and then if we relaunch the server which we'll do it right now it's gonna create a new world called world 2 now and it's gonna generate the spawn area for it and do everything there. So let's say you have multiple maps on your server and you wanna switch between them, you can just shut the server down, go into this setting, this right here, change this setting, and relaunch the server, and now you effectively have just put a different map on your server. So it walks out of that for now. Go back to this. View distance 10. What view distance does is this says that from where a player stands, the server is going to give the player information about 10 chunks away from him. So he'll be able to load, see, interact, and, you know, basically load the chunks 10, 10 chunks away from him. So if, if you're having problems with lag and stuff, maybe it might be beneficial to turn this setting down so that every player on your server actually loads less of the map. Resource pack. This is where you can put a link to a resource pack. Uh, and you can set that up for your server. I might make a video on that in the future. Spawn animals. This does exactly what it says. It'll uh, enable or disable uh, spawning of animals. Whitelist false. Okay, so this whitelist right here, this right here is how you can enable or disable the whitelist on your server. But in order for the whitelist to take any effect, this setting up here... Uh, the enforce 
enforce whitelist right here. This needs to be true. If that's not true, then the whitelist won't work. Archon password. This is where you can set up the password to send Arch Archon commands to the server. I wouldn't worry about this. Generate structures. This is important because this will gener uh, basically allow generation of villages and basically another fortresses and end cities, things like that. If you don't have this enabled, then none of that will spawn in the map. Sometimes you don't want that stuff to spawn. If you're trying to make like a super flat that doesn't have any villages in it or something, you would turn this off. Online mode true. This one's really important too because a lot of people are asking me, do I need a premium account to join a server? Uh, can I make a server? Can I make a cracked server? Uh, yeah, you can. And the way that you do that is uh, you turn off the authentication check. So when someone joins a Minecraft server, it basically goes, the server can, contacts Mojang authentication servers and they basically check if the person joining's GUID is all right and everything matches their name. And if it does, then you're good. You can join the server and you're allowed in. But if it doesn't, you're not allowed on the server and you'll get that error that says failed to verify username. Now, in order to avoid that and completely disable that authentication check, you can turn this online mode to false. But, but that's also going to disable all the skins of everybody on your server and other things like that because it doesn't know who is who. Max build height, 256. Uh, I believe the max is 256, but you can set this lower, I'm pretty sure. Level seed, this is where you can set a custom seed if you want, you'd put that here. Prevent proxy connections, don't worry about that. Use native transport, true. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Message of the day, this is where you can change your message of the day. So if we want to say, this is voice devs server, We'll be good, and this this is what will show up in, uh, in the server browser when we add it. Enable Archon false. This is how you can enable or disable sending Archon commands to the server. Like I said, we're not going to worry about that right now. And that's pretty much it for this file. I want you guys to understand that this file is probably most likely going to be in a completely different order when you guys look at it. It, it is every time I look at it, and uh, that doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that you're changing the right setting after what it says here. So that was uh, basically me explaining that and let me just show you guys real quick when I load this up that you guys can actually see uh, that message of the day show up on the server. So let me go back into here let me start up my server and uh, when that's done I'll show it to you in Minecraft. So now that we got the server set up uh, it's completely running. You can see this was the old message of the day. It says a Minecraft server. And now if I refresh it, it should update to the new one that we set in the server.properties file. If you scroll down, you can say this is voice dev server. And if we join it, it's up. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And if it helped you in any way at all, uh, be sure to leave a like. Um, definitely leave a comment if you guys have any problems or if you guys want to say something nice. And, uh, yeah, check out my other tutorials. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Have a good day.